Hello, I am Isabelle Huppert, and I'm so happy to have this conversation about wonderful film Two with Barbara Sukova and Filippo Benegetti. So, Filippo, uh, I loved your film. Uh, I saw it at the Arc Festival last year, and I was really thrilled by it. So subtle, so moving, so unexpected. So, uh, you are Italian, obviously. Why did you decide to make a movie in French? Uh, well, first of all, thanks for your words. Uh, well, I, I'm Italian, but I live in France. And, and, uh, and I came uh, a little bit like the Nina character in the film. I came in France for love, so for personal reason. So uh, since I live in France and I want to make film and also in France, I found uh, the, the right condition. I found a system that, that you know, uh, uh, and people that trusted me and that, you know, uh, invested in my, in my work. And, and that was great. And, you know, uh, it is sure that making my first feature in, an, in a language that is not my language, you know, to start with, uh, was a kind of a challenge. But uh, I find it very interesting. Also directing uh, actors that speaks another language, I, I believe that that brings uh, something to the way you look at things and to look, you look at them. I, I, I did, uh, before previously, I did a short that was uh, acted in Breton, uh, a language which nobody speaks anymore, more or less, and, and, and which I don't speak neither. And, and that was very interesting about that. You know, the way you, you look at the body, the, the, the way they, the actors move, it was very interesting. So yeah, that was it. Why this story? Why, what drew you to craft this love story between two women? Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, it, it, it is a, a long journey, meaning that uh, in the year of my formation, when I was a teenager, uh, two people that were very important in my formation, since they are the person that passed on to me the passion for cinema, uh, lived a story uh, which is not the one that the film tells, which is invented, but a story that was very hard, and I witnessed that at that time, and I was really uh, touched by it. And so I always thought that if one day uh, I had the chance uh, to reach an audience, uh, I would have loved to tell that kind of story as, as you know, a gesture, uh, something like uh, giving back uh, to them this gift that they gave me of cinema, something like an homage to them. Uh, but then the story is invented, and. Uh, I was looking for years, uh, kind of hunting for metaphor, uh, you know, while you live through your life, uh, the, the right angle to tell that kind of story. And then one day I was in Verona, which uh, strangely enough is the Romeo and Juliet town for a love story, I guess it makes sense. Uh, and I was visiting a friend and his neighbor uh, were two widows that became widows pretty much at the same time. And they were sharing uh, the landing with two apartments, one in front of the other, leaving you know, to keep each other company, uh, talking all the time through the landing. And I've heard that. And since I'm very curious, you know, I was peeping in a little bit. And when I saw that, it clicked. And I said, ah, that's the right way to tell the story that I want to tell, since it is a very uh, simple and everyday life uh, metaphor uh, for, you know, the door that is always open and then the door that is always shut. Give mm -hmm. me the possibility with a simple metaphor to show what is happening inside the character. And that's and I'm, I'm always looking for that. It is not allowed because uh, of, uh, there is something which, uh, like a kind of a transgression in this relationship for people around. Yeah, but but then it, and also you know the landing become a frontier, a border, and uh, that yeah. you have to cross about yeah. transgression and about things that are allowed or not. So you know that that clicked, and then of course uh, then we've been working for five years with my co-writer with Malison Bovarosmi. And there are so many things of my life, her life, and people we know, people we got in touch with, uh, people we studied that, that came into uh, the story and changed it and nourished it. And uh, Filippo, how did you uh, come up with the idea of casting Barbara Sukova and Martin Chevalier? Well, uh, I, I had one thing in mind at the beginning. Uh, it was to cast two very different actresses because uh, I, I the very important thing is to find the right chemistry 
and I believe you know chemistry works better with two different, very different elements. So, and and I know uh, Barbara's work since uh, a long time, and I always loved her work. And I I wanted I uh, was looking for uh, a, a, another French actress, you know, because the character was always a stranger. Because as I'm a stranger in France, you know, uh, I don't know it it made it made sense to me, and I wanted the character to be completely alone. And since mm -hmm. Nina is a stranger there, after you know the stroke and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, we thought about Barbara, and she was, uh, you know, she she made me this gift of trusting me after reading the script and and, and meeting, and 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 with Martin, I I, I wanted uh, a theater actress, uh, which is was less known from the cinematographic audience, also to create this distance and to melt easier in this part of Madeleine Girard uh, from the small town in south of France, because also Barbara as Nina has nothing to do in a small town in southern France. And I think this kind of thing nourished the character uh, mm -hmm. somehow. And, you know, and Martine, she's such a great theater actress. And, and uh, some, in, in the casting director took me to La Comédie Française to see her, and she was wonderful. So, you know, and also she was brave enough to, to trust me. <laughs> yeah, they're both extraordinary. I was they are. touched by their performances. Yeah, so, but I think you, you gave an answer already to this next question, because uh, why did you choose to choose to shoot the film entirely in the apartment? And what is quite extraordinary about the film that it, uh, given the, the, the restricted situation of the location, it never, it's never theatrical, yet it remains extremely highly cinematic. And I think it's uh, not the least uh, challenge and succeed of the film, actually. Thanks. Uh, well, uh, you know, it is, the idea was, uh, how do we create, uh, again, the, the architecture was really the core of the idea of the film, uh, because it gave me one possibility, first of all, uh, was to have two apartments that some, somehow mirror the character. You mm -hmm. know, the Madeleine's apartment is very cozy and full of objects that represent her life and her past. But it is too cozy. I was always talking with the set designer saying that I want that to be so cozy that you don't want to live in it. You have to suffocate into it. And, and Nina's apartment, it is a fake apartment. And you find it out. And that was a will that we had since the beginning while writing the film, just in the second part of the film. And when you realize that, that this empty apartment was never actually lived in, uh, it mirrors the, their sta her state of mind, the, the emptiness that she might feel after the stroke. And, and so that helped to, to, to build up attention and, we, and to avoid also theatrical uh, idea, we, we, we shot in, in CinemaScope. And, and, and really, um, I, you know, it's also th this idea of shooting a thriller more than, than a melodrama. Uh, mm -hmm. This idea of creating a, a tension that will, that will uh, trigger uh, the, the audience emotion. That was very important since the beginning. Okay, thank you, Filippo. Thanks so much, Isabel. And Barbara, see you. Maybe we talk later. Yeah. Bye. Cheers. Ciao. Congratulations. Hello, Barbara. So, Barbara, what drew you to this script? Um, first, Isabel, I have to say it's such an honor for me that you do this because I think you are such an extraordinary actress and such a unique actress and with a mind-blowing body of work. I mean, I'm just... So touched that that you like this film and my work, and uh, so I want to say that before <laughs> everything, because I'm 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 really like I'm sure one of your biggest. Fans. It's really my pleasure, really my pleasure. Um, what drew me to the script? Well, um, I always like to do things that I haven't done before, and I certainly hadn't done a love story between not in this way between two women. I did something like a more cover, covered one but not one like this. And when I read the script, I, I mean, there was really so little that I had to object to. And I like the idea that it was a love story between two older women and an erotic story between two older women, because we know, uh, we know stories. I mean, often the audience or especially men are drawn to stories between young, young lesbian women, which has sort of a, titillating quality and I, I like this idea that it's really then more about the love than just about you know the, the physical consummation of love and um, 
Uh, yeah, and I also thought it was so interesting that a young man was interested in uh, the love story between two older women. I, I, I was wondering what kind of dynamic that is, what, what, what interested. I, I thought this could be a very different look um, a situation on this situation than if it was like, let's say, a female director of the same age. Yeah, I like what you say because one would think that necessarily a movie like this should be focused and seen through a woman's eye, and which I don't think. I think, especially in mm -hmm. cinema, um, a, f a male gaze or a female gaze, I wouldn't say is equal, but is as surprising sometimes and interesting. And I it's know. a story between two women that it should be necessarily seen through. A woman's gaze and I think it was that's really really interesting like your film Hidden Love it's a man who directed it right uh, he didn't love city quoi what what the... that is you the the mother and the daughter this extraordinary love story between mother and daughter she she's in an, in an asylum in a mental asylum oh my god um I must be I'm mental... sorry <laughs> but, uh, I have it on my tongue, but I don't say it's quite hidden love. Hidden uh, love. Is it in an asylum or? Yes, it's in an oh, asylum. No, but you know what? So, uh, okay, I get you. But so, so, so few, such few people saw this film. How did you come? Really, uh, it's with great as It's extraordinary. Yeah. Oh my it's, God. It's, I'm happy to hear about it. Actually, and it's a male director, right? And it's this between yeah, mother and daughter. Yeah, it's, and it's, I was wondering for a while, is that is that a woman director or no? So no, yeah, no. that's what it's interesting sometimes, like Filippo seeing these two older women. Uh, exactly. That's a similar. Oh, that's thank you for mentioning that film. Yeah, it, it's okay. Thank you. So, um, so what did what did it mean for you to play that role of this woman in love? Did you, because first of all, did you ever play a woman in love with another woman? Well, I, I, as, as a, I, I did this film, I got from. I never did it myself, actually. And it's something I sometimes think about, you know. I played yeah. numerous love stories, but I never thought, I never played a, um, a woman in love with another woman. And yeah, I, I played, a, uh, played a film uh, called Vision about Hildegard von Bingen, a 12th century nun who oh. has a very loving feeling, but it's a more uh, transcendent kind of feeling. So uh, no, I was very interested. I was very interested how this would be going. And when I met Martin, we uh, Filippo arranged a um, a dinner with us in Paris, and we knew we wouldn't have much rehearsal. So what did we talk about? How do you prepare? And we just opened up about our own love life and our own lovers and our heartbreaks and all that. And uh, and I have of course beforehand I have. Um, I have talked to lesbian friends and, you know, it doesn't seem to be so very different. The feelings, you know, the, 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 the pain, the, the hopes, the dreams, except in this case, what interested me, what element and what part of the love was the secrecy? I was wondering, did this relation last for such a long time? And that's very important in the film. I think that it is a relation that has gone on for a long time. It's not new love. These people have, have lived something together. But um, what was the secrecy? Did that stimulate the love? Is that why it was able to, the love lasted so long that there was always an element of adventure in it? Because I imagined, how did they even meet? How did they, how did they see each other? They must have made plans. They must have, you know, lied to their family. And, and all these elements, uh, did this sort of enhance the eroticism between them? I think you gave an answer to my next question, which was going to be, how did this role of a lesbian woman uh, differ from other love stories? But you just gave me the answer. Yeah, and in yeah, fact- well, I think for a lot, I think it has changed a lot. Today, I'm, I'm living in a neighborhood in New York where there are a lot of uh, gay women are living. And today, it's, of course, a totally different thing than in this small town still in France. It's probably a Catholic town. There's probably religious worries. And uh, here, the women can go, you know, openly hand in hand. But when the film came out in Toronto, 
I remember there were two young gay men who came to me and said, oh, thank you so much for this movie. They were uh, from the Middle East and they said, where we come from, we can't live our, our love. And so for us, it's so important. And, and I think that is a, a little bit like this for, for Madeleine and Nina, that they are still in the situation, not only because the family, but also because of society around that they can't really live that love openly yes and i was thinking when i watched the film i thought it's you know if you think about it there were up till now there were until now there were more representations of of uh, uh, love uh, between gay men than between lesbian yes uh, yes yeah why i don't know really why, <laughs> uh, if you think about it it's may, might be one of the first films which really talk yeah. about so, Especially older gay lesbians. Yeah, older, know, absolutely. Uh, we were talking about during the film that uh, the daughter has so much problems and the kids, because the kids are a very important part of the film, I think. And uh, um, Lea Drucker, who plays you know, the daughter, who is wonderful, I think, uh, that for them and also for the son, they might have been if it was a friend who was gay. They would have not reacted so shocked. But I think you see your, mo your parents and especially your mother probably very different from any other person. And that's also maybe, that is the reason that you just don't see older lesbian women, mothers um, who live this life because we still in some way idealize the mothers or, I mean, mothers have such a, um, you know, in psychology, you know, either they are being condemned and they're made responsible for everything, every problem that their kid have, or they're idealized. So uh, maybe that's one of the reasons, I don't know. Oh, so, yes, I was wondering, did you prepare with Martin? You know, Martin, I've known Martin for so many years. She's such an yeah, incredible actress and person. And uh, so I was, <laughs> I, saw, I, I saw, saw the film through this vision of, of Martin doing this role, and I, and uh, I was wondering, how did you did you prepare with her before the film? Did you girls had any discussions uh, before, or did you just let it go as it? No, happened? well, we just had this one dinner. I was mentioning that we uh, where we just talked very privately. But normally you don't do this when you don't know somebody. You know, you meet somebody for the first time on the dinner. You don't open your your love book <laughs> or your life book. So, but we knew we we had to somehow. You know, we had to we had to, to get into it somehow. And yeah. uh, and then during the film, we 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 talked. You know, when we when we were off. You know, during the shooting breaks, we we were talking and trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. and we were both. You know, I can I think we are both glad that we didn't have to do like a full-on sex scene in bed <laughs> i mean which would be okay too but it would have probably been a little more difficult not because we are not uh not gay but because i just it's every time i mean i don't know you have done a lot of these scenes i have done these scenes it's always it's always a a, a different thing if you know if you go i mean i have played uh uh, a lot of roles with gay partners in very erotic situations with gay men, and uh, so I, you know, I, I really don't see in, in, in the profession where there's the, the difference. It's always a little bit of a, I mean, for me, I always have to to swallow a little bit and think before I can do it very open and free. Mm. Although and I do think it's easier to 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 to, to un unveil your body than your soul. Ah, you think it's easier to unveil your body than your soul? Yeah, because I mean to show, to show like really de your deepest inside of love, I think is more difficult than to show my breasts. Mm, you mean on screen or in real life? On screen. On screen. <laughs> yeah. Not too sure, but we'll have a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you think makes this film distinctly French, if it does so? Or do you think that there is something in the film that is distinctly French or, I don't know, European? Do you think you would have done the same film in Germany, for example? It Even though it's a strange been. situation because it's a French film yeah. with an Italian director, with a French actress and a German actress. So, I yes, don't know. I think it's a European film, right? 
It's a very European film. I think in America, there's always accents, are always something that are something, although it changes a little bit. I think, I think uh, films get more diverse. Also, uh, regarding nationality, I think people can accept accents more now than 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, I, the, the family seems to be French. Uh, I, I, I loved the French part of the movie. We shopped in this small town in Sommières, and French. but I'm still, it's near Montpellier. Near Montpellier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called Sommières. And I loved, I loved shooting in France. It, it was just, I mean, we did the inside in Luxembourg and uh, we did a lot of stuff in Luxembourg, but we did a lot of outside in, in France. And, and I loved that small town and, and, and uh, especially the Marché. I mean, it was just wonderful to go to this market. That is something that I really don't have here. I mean, we have a farmer's market in New York, but you just can't compare that to any market in France. And, and I'm still thinking of it, and I'm telling my kids about this. I say, oh, you should have seen this, the saucisson, the sausages, and the <laughs> vegetables, and the cheeses. And, yeah, that's... Um, I nice one in New York, too, but I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah the, the, you, know, you can't compare it. Absolutely. <laughs> and I've been a part of, an, of a film submitted, submitted for Best International Picture before. Or is this the first time? I think this is the first time for me. Yeah. It's exciting. It is. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Thank you, France. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. As more people see the film, uh, as more people see the film, what do you hope their reaction will be? What do you expect from people's reactions? Well, you, you know yourself. I mean, that the same film is seen in so many different ways from people. I've done Q&As where one person said, I love this film about loneliness. And the other person said, I love this film about love. So <laughs> it's, uh, there, there will be different reactions. I hope, and we've heard this, which I, which I really liked, um, from people that people who, older people, for example, who were, um, had problems with homosexuality, that they changed their mind when they came out and they saw this long lasting loving relationship. And we were also surprised that so many young people reacted to it. I did not expect that. And I think maybe because they haven't seen it. They haven't seen love stories between certainly not between women. There are some between older people, but I think there is actually an interest from younger people because the media is so full of young, beautiful, uh, you know, exciting people. And, and I think it's a lot of pressure also on young people to be constantly confronted with that and to see like these two women, one provincial, the other from a bigger town, wrinkled and... And, you know, not at all that, that image of, of, of beauty. I think that's maybe uh, a little bit relaxing also for people. And I think people start more and more to young people an interest in older people. And how was it to work uh, on a French film compared to German films? I mean, this is not your first time in a French film. I, no. I, but I don't know. Do, do you... Can, can you establish some of distinguished differences between two ways of doing or as I... Mm, I think it's the through, all the, through all the co-productions, it has become a little more the same. I remember 20 years ago, the food on, friend, on German films was not great. Uh, but now uh, it's... No, I, I think... I think through all the co-productions, there is more similarity now. I, I, I couldn't say at this point what the difference is. This has a lot to do with the production. It has a lot to do with the uh, director. We had a wonderful production, wonderful producers. Uh, yeah, I, I think it has more to do more to do with that. And and we had a great, you know, lovely actors, you know, which was a fun working with. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it was I- a real pleasure to do this film. Has the film been released in Germany already? I think it has, but then came COVID, and then it was just like stopped and uh, just, yeah. And 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 went. I mean, 
didn't stay for long because of COVID? No, I don't think it is. COVID came and then everybody stayed at home. And I think they're releasing, they're streaming it now, uh, you know, internationally. And hopefully, I mean, in some places there will be theaters open. We saw it in the theater in, in China, in Macau and mm -hmm. in Toronto. And then it was mainly, then it came out in France. So it was, was nice to see it in the theater there. Mm -hmm. But uh, then COVID came and it was... Uh, that was in a lot it. of places, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure you have experienced the same thing, you know, with films. Oh, yes, with so many films in France. Right, okay. I know. Yeah. yeah. Barbara, thank you so much. And thank you, Filippo. Filippo had to leave to receive an award. Congratulations and good for him. And I was so happy to have this conversation with you. And I wish you the best for the film. Again, it's a great film. It's very moving. It's very unusual. It's one of those films which remain, once you have seen it, you can't forget it. And uh, I, I wish the best for the film, really. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Isabel. <laughs>